Mike Evans, shalom. Thank you for joining us. Shalom. Good to be with you. And thank you for having us here at the Friends of Zion Heritage Center Museum and now two more well, institutes. Tell us what's going on here. A, it, this is a $100 million social network campus, the most uh, significant uh, in the state of Israel. The Media Center is, if you call it a TV studio, it would be the most advanced in the state of Israel and also the largest. It seats 150, the screen is 36 feet by 18 feet. And also we launched the Ambassador Institute with a company called Blackboard. Blackboard is the world's largest server platform. They have 100 million uh, subscribers. They, they, uh, one of theirs is Harvard, another one Yale. They're the biggest educational platform in the world and they have partnered with us to create ambassadors for Israel that will stay in their own countries and defend Israel's brand and combat anti-Semitism. So it's not only the knowledge, but it's also the feeling. It's also being pro-Israel from understanding the truth. Take the issue of uh, college campuses. Mm -hmm. Facebook began on a college campus. Now we're number 31 in the world on Facebook. We have 67 million on Facebook. That's actually more followers than Donald Trump has on Twitter. And so we, we are building a social network movement. And what we'll do is we'll have ambassadors on every university campus in the world, combating anti-Semitism, defending Israel's brand in every major city in the world. Our goal is 100,000 Christian Zionist ambassadors. How do you fight the lies? Because it's not, as we talked about, it's not just about the details. It's coming from a, from a deep place of anti-Semitism, anti-Israelism. How do you fight it? You're just there telling a story or can it be defeated, do you feel? Well, you, let me use one example. Uh, MBS, MBS, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. I spent two and a half hours with him in the palace in Riyadh. And this 33-year-old prince he told me for two years he's been re-educating all the Saudis against anti-Semitism and about Israel. He also told me the Palestinians are fools. They should copy Israel, not fight Israel. And when I start seeing this, I realize two things. Number one, you have to expose the devious anti-Semites who are anti-Zionist. It's the same. Anti-Zionism is the new anti-Semitism. By the way, they all, not only uh, resist Israel, they support Hamas. They support Daesh, ISIS. You have to expose these people, a lot of them. And secondly, you have to define the terms of the debate. Now, when it comes uh, to telling the story, is it about telling why it's okay according to law, or why it's okay because they're terrorists and uh, we're not, or is it also bringing the biblical story? Is it also bringing Listen, the historical and spiritual even story? We believe Israel has a historical, mm -hmm. a biblical, and a humanitarian right to their land, all three. And we believe it's critically important because Jews don't die over land. They never did they die over being Jews. They were killing Jews before they ever had any land. And when the land was taken from them 26 different times, they were still killing them because they're Jews. How are you accepted here in Jerusalem? Uh, you know, someone from outside, so to speak, telling the story. Maybe it's even unique because we here sometimes take things for granted. Well, I think at the beginning it was a little uh, un I began with Begin, Menachem Begin. That's long ago. And when I began with Begin, I said to him, I don't know if you want to work with the Christian Zionist. They may think I'm a missionary and want to convert Jews or something. I said, I want to combat anti-Semitism. I want to convert Jew haters into Jew lovers. That's the only conversion. Begin said, don't worry, I'm a short prime minister. If they criticize me, I'll stand on the papers. It makes me look taller. Besides, today's news is wrapped in tomorrow's fish. 
So I began with Menachem Begin. I've been doing this for a very long time. But now we have a new platform to use, social network, and it's tearing the devils apart because they can't combat it. And uh, we're here also while in Jerusalem and you participate in many of the events of the Christian Media Summit. Christian Media, for those who aren't familiar, how big and how important is that for Israel? Well, if you take all the media in America, ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, Christian media globally is larger than all four. Wow. Christian media has more than 4,000 television stations. It has more than 40 satellites. It's massive across the globe. It's the hugest media organization on the planet, Christian media. And one thing most of them all have in common, they all have a Bible that they believe, and they believe in a Bible land, and they also believe, because of the Bible, that the Jewish people are God's chosen people. You're still in very good co contact and connections with uh, President Trump, right? I advise President Trump. I one of 25 evangelicals that gave him the White House. And he, we have direct access to him. We have dinner with him. We're in the Oval Office with him. I have direct access to his team, such as Jared Kushner and all of them. And uh, David Friedman, they're like family. So what do you tell Israelis who have this sort of fear that maybe you know, Israel got so many good gifts and, and tokens from uh, President Trump, but now as the peace plan is coming, there, there will be demands for concessions and for giving away pieces of the land even. I tell Israel it's time to celebrate. I'm the guy who put on up 220 billboards that said Trump make Israel great on Jerusalem's 50th anniversary when Donald Trump came and did not recognize Jerusalem. People said, are you crazy? You have the billboards up. I said, because he will. Now, I know this man. He's courageous. He's like Israelis. They're tough. They're sabras. He he is a Gentile Sabra, and he, he does what he says. Now look at, look at, just look. Not only did he recognize Jerusalem and the Golan Heights, he kicked the blank out of a bus. He sucked the oxygen out of the PA. Taylor Force Act closed down the consulate, anti-Semitic consulate, closed down the PLO offices. This guy is the best gift that Israel ever had. Now, what do I think he'll do? I think Donald Trump is going to do a lot more. I, I expect him on the, on the Jordan issue, to uh, Valley issue, I expect him to kiss it. And I also expect him in time to acknowledge Judea and Samaria like he did Jerusalem and the Golan Heights. Listen, his 25 evangelical advisors all believe this is the Bible land. And they, we all tell it to him. And he loves us. And he knows what we want. So let's relate to the second fear after people hear all those good words. Second term, the upcoming elections. Our good friend Trump is going to stay in office? Listen, we evangelicals will vote for him 100% mm -hmm. because we have more faith in him than we do in his critics. We know him. He's kept his promises to us. He has the evangelical vote. He has it for sure. Now, those who are running against him, many of them are anti-Israel. They're making statements such as, the settlements are illegal. We should stop funding aid. We will rip their heads off for that. We evangelicals believe if you curse Israel, God will curse you. If you bless Israel, God will bless you. So we're not going to let the Democrats get away and put a curse on us. Mike, you're here a lot. We're here in the middle of Jerusalem. You could feel in the air that's something special. Listen, I'm the happiest guy I ever met. And the key to happiness is committing your life to a cause greater than yourself. My cause is combating anti-Semitism. 
It's a God cause. It goes back to Abraham's day. And it's a battle between darkness and light. It's actually even much bigger than the Jewish people. Because the Jewish people, who were the only people who were not pagans, they carried the Torah. They gave us the moral Ten Commandments. And so this is a battle between darkness and light. It's a great cause. And Israel is the firewall between radical Islam and the West. The stronger Israel becomes, the weaker the, the radical Islamic terrorist will become. Mike Evans, thank you so much for having us here and thank you for all you're doing. It's my honor.